Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and today we've got a product. Uh, it's a Kiwi product uh, from New Zealand. It's the Syrup Genie One. Now, even though this is the Genie One, I'd say it's at least six or seven times better than the OG. And uh, this has got motors in it. It's got microchips, and it's really uh, sweet as. Now, before we go any further, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a joke, a little bit of an icebreaker. So stop me if you've heard this one. Uh, so an Aussie bloke decides to go visit New Zealand. He sees a Kiwi guy and he's doing something unnatural with a shape. Hey everyone, it's non-threatening, culturally sensitive Jordan to talk about the just announced new Syrup Genie 1. Now, the old Genie was pretty ubiquitous. It seemed everybody was using it if they wanted to get into any kind of motion control, time-lapse work. And a big part of the appeal is these have always been a cable-based system. So you could just attach the cable to your existing slider. So it was very versatile. You could set it up for cable cams, all sorts of stuff but it is getting pretty long in the tooth and it's a fairly expensive system. So now we've got a less expensive option and it's also a whole lot more usable for live action filmmaking. Now the interface on the original Genie was pretty archaic. I mean, really it looked like you were working on Microsoft DOS when you were setting up your time lapses. And then Syrup brought out the Genie Mini, which was a little hockey puck you could attach. And most importantly for me, that gave you access to Bluetooth so you could use their very intuitive app to set up your shots. Now we've got that rolled right into this. This is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. In terms of design, I mean, it's a big black square. It's pretty straightforward. You do have a quick release on the bottom and that's interchangeable. So you can either have a cord so you can physically move this the Genie along one side or the other, or you can attach a pan base for it so that you can do panning when you're rolling video or do a panoramic photo. Other than that, the big thing I wish this had is an actual display so I could see my battery life or how much time is remaining in the move without having to take my phone out, unlock it, open up the app and see how things are going. I mean, we're all staring at our phones anyways, so it's not that much of a big deal. Okay, so the main reason people are gonna be looking at this system is for time-lapse, and we've got one clicking by right now. And it is a very intuitive interface with this. I do really like how they've laid out the app. And there's a few really nice advantages with this compared to the older version. The biggest one is you can set up to five keyframes. So you can have it move quicker from one point to another, or once it hits a certain point, if you have another system, you can have it start panning or tilting, things like that. Now it is only five where you have to go to the Genie 2 system, the more expensive one if you want up to 10. But honestly, I can't think of very many moves where I'd need more than five keyframes. Now, right now we're doing just a simple horizontal movement, which is really easy on the motor. And honestly, Honestly, most cinema cameras you'd be able to throw on this, it'll handle the weight just fine, let alone mirrorless and DSLRs. What is really cool with this is that the motor is actually strong enough that if you want, you can flip it up vertically and it'll actually move a kilo and a half camera and lens combination. So you can get a nice vertical move in the shot. So you want to get outside of doing time lapses and you want to do some live action video. This is a much more usable system than the original Genie. For starters, it is much quieter. Now, I wouldn't use this in a completely quiet studio with it very close to the microphone, but in most situations, you're never gonna hear it, which was not the case with the original. However, this isn't the fastest moving thing. It's really designed for nice, slow, deliberate moves like we've got right now. If you need a faster movement, then you're gonna wanna go to the Genie 2 Linear. But what I really like about this is that the interface is much improved, again, from what we had before with the app, and you have a bounce back option. So once it gets to the end of the movement, it'll cycle back to the beginning. As one long uninterrupted take, it's pretty distracting, but if you wanna cut back and forth between that moving camera as a B-roll shot, it's gonna look really, really nice. One other cool feature is we now have the live drive system on this, which lets me in real time just adjust how the camera is moving on top of the platform. Now it looks terrible when you're just a person talking to camera and the camera keeps rocking back and forth, but it is wonderful for product photography or anything that's a little less deliberate and you're not sure you're gonna be able to program your move from the beginning. Now I think that the Genie One makes a ton of sense in Syrup's lineup because for starters, I remember using the earlier Genie and I would always put a Genie Mini on top of it, even though I didn't need a pan, just because I didn't want to mess with the terrible interface built onto the original Genie. 
Now there is the Genie 2 system, which is quite a bit more expensive. And if you want to do a lot of live action stuff where you want the camera moving very quickly or want to put heavier cameras on for live action, then it might make sense. But I think that's a very niche use case. However, since that first Genie came out, there has been a ton of competition in this field. I really love the Rhino sliders and we're seeing a lot of stuff from Edelkron as well. And those do have some real advantages. If you're only ever going to use the system on one slider or a slider from the same company, one system, then those are going to give you very quick setup and you don't have to worry about anything like tangled cables or anything like that. What's great about the Genie is if you've got an existing slider or a few different ones, you can easily move it from one to the other. And if you want to get creative, you know, tie those ropes to two trees and have a dolly go in between them. There's a ton of creative options that you can use with this. It really lets you experiment a little more than some of those other systems. But if I was doing a lot of live action motion control, I would still probably lean towards the Rhino or Edelkron solutions at this point. Despite all that, I'm still a huge fan of the flexibility of Syrup's cable-based systems. And having that at a lower price point now with that very intuitive interface means if you're a photographer who's been looking to dip their toe into a little bit of time lapse and hey, you get some motion control stuff for live action video as well, this is a really great option and you should definitely take a look at it. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our how to time lapse video that we've posted earlier. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon.